Today's video is dedicated to the absolute beginners in Blender. This is the first chapter of my course, The Ride. If you always wanted to try out 3D, this tutorial is for you. It's going to be a long video, but at least you will have everything you need in one place. How to download and install Blender, the interface, the navigation, the objects, the camera and lights, you will create your first animation and you will finish by creating this beautiful render by yourself. So let's start just after this quick shout out. Hello everyone and welcome to the ride, my Blender car animation course created for beginners and intermediate users who want to get into car animation. I'm so proud to present this project. It's more than 64 videos and 11 hours of training and today I can finally share it with you. In this course, you are going to cover all the topics you need to master in order to create your own 3D projects, such as environment design, lighting, animation, camera animation, camera framing for TikTok, Instagram or YouTube short, smoke simulation, <laughs> DaVinci Resolve, sound effects, and the list goes on. I will also provide all the necessary assets that you need to follow along. My updated city pack with skyscrapers, city props, and 22 new buildings that you can use in all your animations. HDRI magic to create realistic animations in a few clicks. You will also get this C63 AMG, this OD RS5, this Corvette C8, and this beautiful Mustang. Yes, everything is included in this course. To download Blender, you go on blender.org, you click on download and download Blender. Blender works with macOS and Linux, and for the macOS users, there is a version created especially for Apple Silicon-based computers. Once you have the installation file, you simply double-click on it, and you follow the steps, it should be pretty straightforward. At this time, the production version is 3.5, but everything shared in this course should work exactly the same for the latest versions as well. If it's not the case, I will update the concern section. And now, let's open Blender. Unlike me, for the first time, you might have a quick setup screen. I personally leave everything by default, and you just click Next. Now we should be on the same page. In the New File section, you can select what kind of project you want to start, that will change the interface to better fit your needs, but most of the time, if not always, I start with the general file type. In the recent files section, you will get exactly that, all your recent files. With open, you can select manually what blend file you want to open on your computer. And yes, .blend is the native extension for Blender files. So all your projects will have this .blend extension. Let's create a new general file. If it's your first 3D program, it can be a bit scary, but don't worry, with a little bit of practice, soon you will feel like at home. And another important point to mention is you don't have to know everything in Blender. Personally, after a decade and hundreds of projects, I only know I think about 40% of the program, but I have everything I need to create my animations. To introduce you to this beautiful interface, I have divided the screen in six zones. Zone number one, the main menu. Zone number two, the workspaces, here. Zone three, the layers. Zone four, the properties. Zone number five, the most important one, the viewport. And zone number six, the timeline. Let's see each zone one by one. Zone 1, the main menu. You might be familiar with this kind of menu as it's almost the same in all applications. You have the file menu where you can interact with the project files using different actions like open, open recent, save, save as, save copy, and more specific functions that we will check later. The edit menu where you find the famous undo and redo, various functions, and the blender preferences. This is where you have all the settings to customize your Blender experience and behavior. The default options are doing a pretty good job, but if we need to change anything, I will tell you how later. Then you have the render menu that we will use to render our scene. When I started 3D, I was a little bit confused about this render thing, but don't worry, 
In this chapter, we will create our first render and you will see exactly what it is doing. Then you have the window menu to deal exactly with that, your windows, and the help menu if you need help with Blender. That's it for zone number one, which is once again something you might be already familiar with. Zone two, the workspaces. According to what you want to do in Blender, the application can propose different workspaces for modeling, sculpting, animation, compositing, and as you can see, each time you switch from one workspace to another, the tools and windows are adjusted accordingly. But just to be clear, you don't have to be in a specific workspace to do a specific task. What I mean is, if I stay in layout, I can do just about everything in this workspace. Animation, shading, modeling, etc. So in summary, workspaces are great, but for now, layout and shading will be just enough for us to handle our projects. And to be honest, those are the only workspaces I use. Done three, the layers. Here you can find all the different objects that compose your scene, a little bit like in Photoshop. You can select an object and it will be highlighted in the viewport with this uh, yellow line around it. I can select the light here or this cube or the camera and it will be, as you can see, highlighted. In those layers, you can also create a new collection, which are like your directory in Windows or Mac OS. You just right click, new collection, you name it, and you can drag and drop objects in it. It won't change their position in the viewport, but you will quickly realize that collections are a great way to keep things organized. Some important icons that we will use also are this little eye, that you can use to hide the object from the viewport. For example, this cube, if I click the eye, it disappears from the viewport, it's hidden. And if I click on the eye again, it appears. And this one, this is the disable in renders. This is when we want to exclude an object from the render. We will check that later, don't worry. Uh, zone number four, the properties. If you check closely those icons, you will notice that there are more spaces between some of them. For example, here, one, two, three, four, five icons, and then you have a little space, then another icon, another space, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven icon, a space, and a final icon alone. If we don't consider this icon, which we will check later, we could say that there are four groups of icons. One group here, one icon alone, which is in the second group. This is group number three and group number four. So to help you understand, the first group are the properties that concern your entire project, everything within your project. The render properties, output properties, view layers properties, the scene properties, and the world properties. Once again, those icons are not those properties are not for a specific object, but are for the entire project. Then you have the collection properties, which impact the actual collection only. And this third group are the properties of the selected object. So for example, if I click on my cube, those group, those icons in this group will affect only the cube. If I click on the light, now those icons, and you can see that they are not the same, will affect only the light. Same if I click on the camera, those icons will affect only the camera. So for now we have those icons who concern the entire scene, the entire project, this one for the actual collection, and those ones for the actual object which is selected. And finally, we have this lonely icon, which is the texture properties, and it's available for any objects in my scene. And for now, don't worry too much about those properties. I will show you the most important one when we will work on our different projects. And now the viewport, and this is the most important zone on our screen, because this is where you will have your different objects displayed. 
This is where the magic happens. We could say that it's the visual representation of what we are creating. And in this first chapter, we will spend quite some time here just to get you used to manipulating objects and moving around the viewport. And the timeline is our final zone where you can see all the frames that compose your project. For example, currently I have 250 frames in my project and you can see that here and here. So if I need more frames or fewer frames, I just have to change this value. And to play those frames, you just have to press spacebar on your keyboard and spacebar again if you want to stop. Once again, don't worry too much about this zone yet. We will create a concrete example in a few minutes. And that's it for the interface presentation. Now let's see how to navigate in the viewport. Right, up, down, as you want. To zoom in or zoom out, you need to use your mouse wheel. Wheel up to zoom in and wheel down to zoom out. So wheel up and wheel down. So I repeat everything until now. Middle mouse button, you hold it and you can rotate around the middle of the screen. Shift and middle mouse button, you can move around, left, right, up, down, and wheel up and wheel down to zoom in or zoom out. Another way to have a more precise zoom, because wheel up and wheel down is a bit choppy, you can hold control on your keyboard, middle mouse button hold, and you move up and down to zoom in or out, but it's going to be very smooth, as you can see. It's like a dolly in the cinema, right? A dolly movement in the cinema. Very, very smooth. So once again, you hold control, middle mouse button, and up or down. So let's do a recap of everything. You hold the middle mouse button to rotate around the middle of the screen. You press shift, you hold shift, Middle mouse button, you hold it and you move uh, right or left, up, up and down. Wheel up and wheel down to zoom in or zoom out. Or if you want a more precise zoom, you press Ctrl, you hold it. Middle mouse button, you hold it and up and down to zoom in and zoom out. Now it's up to you to practice a little bit to get familiar with those commands. One shortcut I use all the time is a numpad period to focus zoom on an object. Let me show you. For example, if I select my cube and I want to focus on it, I just press numpad period and boom, I will have my view focused on this object. This is the same if I select, for example, my light here. Let me, see, let me, let me move my screen and I press numpad period, boom. I will focus automatically on the light. And this is the same if you use here the layers. If I select, for example, the camera here, I just press numpad period and I will focus on the camera. Same for the cube. I select here the cube and I select the cube. This is very handy sometimes when you lost objects in your scene. <laughs> and if you don't have the key numpad period, because maybe you don't have a numpad, you can come here in a view and here you have this frame selected, which is actually numpad period. You right click, change shortcut and you select the key you want to use for this shortcut. All right. If you don't have the numpad period. So I repeat once again, you go in view and frame selected, right click and change shortcut and you select the shortcut you want to affect to this uh, frame selected thing. Now it's just a matter of practicing and this is what we will do in our different projects. There are some final shortcuts I would like to share with you. Uh, those are to quickly change the viewport view. For example, I could press one on my numpad to have the front view. So let me just add an object so you have a better understanding what's happening. And you move it and scale it down. Okay. So if I press one on my numpad, 
I will have the front view. And if I press 3 on my numpad, I will have the side view. Okay, so 1 the front view and 3 the side view. And if I press 7, I will have the top view. So 1 is the front view, 3 is the side view, and 7 is the top view. And if you want the opposite, for example, this is 1 is the front view, but I want the re rear view, I just press Ctrl 1, and now I will be in the rear view, behind. Right, this is the front view, and this is the rear view. And same for the side view. I am on this side, so it seems that I am uh, on the right side. If I want to go on the left side, I just have to press Ctrl and 3. So 3 and Ctrl and 3 for the opposite side. Same for the top, so 7 from the top and Ctrl 7 from the bottom. And if you don't have a numpad for those shortcuts, all you have to do is you go in Edit, Preferences, input here and you press emulate numpad so you now you can press the normal numbers one two three four five on top on your on the top of your keyboard to emulate the numpad okay that's it for the navigation in the viewport once again now it's just a, a matter of practicing now let's see how to add objects in your scene in Blender, most of the time, you start your object creation by adding a mesh that is closer to the final object you want to design. For example, if you would like to create a ball, you might want to start with a UV sphere. If you want to design a table, you might want to start with the cube. But what is a mesh? A mesh is a collection of vertices, edges and faces that describe the shape of a 3D object. Now, let's see what are those vertices, edges, and faces. Vertices are those little points on my cube. Okay? All those points are called vertices. And one point is called vertex. So, one point vertex and several points vertices, right? So, actually, there are eight vertices on my cube. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. And you can see that here in the status bar. The vertices, 1 on 8 because I have selected one vertex. And if I select two, vert two vertices, I will have 2 on 8. So there is 8 vertices. If you don't have this status bar, you just go on Window and you activate the Show Status Bar. Just like that. Okay, so the vertices are those little points. Now let's talk about the edges. An edge is the line that is connecting two vertices. So, for example, this one, right, in orange, this is uh, an edge. So, it's connecting this vertex with this vertex. And on this cube, we have 12 edges. So, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we have the same uh, at the bottom, so that's 8. And we have the edges here on the side. So that's four edges on the side. So four plus four plus four equal 12. Once again, those are the lines uh, which are connecting two vertex. And finally, we have what we call the faces or sometimes polygons. And a face, this is a face of my cube. This is one of the face. A face is surrounded by edges. And on my cube, there are actually six faces. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1 at the bottom, 6. Okay, so the faces are surrounded by edges. And as I told you, sometimes it's also called polygons. So, to recap, on the one object I have here, the cube, I have 8 vertices, okay, those points. I have 12 edges, the line between the points. And I have six faces. Okay, now let's see how you can add a mesh in your scene. So the shortcut for that is Shift A, and you have the mesh menu. Let's add a UV sphere, for example, and I will move it on the Y axis, G and Y, just to free the room. 
and shift to A, I do it again, shift to A mesh, and you select what you want to add in your scene. There is another way to do that. You could go here, add mesh, and you can select the mesh you want to add. But I strongly advise that you use the shortcut shift to A. It will really speed up your workflow. So once again, shift to A and you select your mesh. Later, we will see what are the common items you are going to use in this list because, of course, as usual, we will not use everything, so it's better to focus on what we really need. You know how to add meshes in your scene, now let's see how you can move objects around. Let's start a new project. You go on File, New and General. And I don't need to save this file. I will hide the light and the camera for now. So you click on this little eye here in the layers section. So camera and light. Let's move this cube. To move it, you select it and you press G on your keyboard. Just one time, you don't have to hold it. And you move your mouse around and the cube will follow. Yay! <laughs> so one more time, you select your object, G, and you can move it around. But to be honest, I never move objects like that, and I'll show you why. Let me add a UV sphere. I will place this sphere, no, just here. Okay. Okay, let's say you have your sphere here, and let's try to move the cube next to it using G. So I select my cube, G, and I move my cube next to the sphere. And it seems that I'm next to my sphere, but if I look at in front view, as you can see, I'm not next to it at all. So maybe you will say, okay, let's go in front view and do it then. Okay, I press G and I go in front view and I'm something like that. Maybe I'm close to the, to the sphere. And if I check, no, I'm not close to the sphere. So I have to do it again and again and again. And now it's too high and I have to go down. You understand, it's a real pain to move objects using only G. That's why I always use G with the axis you want to move on. As I told you, the red line is the X axis and the green line, the Y axis. We also have the blue line in the, in the sky. You can see, see that here, which is the Z axis. So if I want to move the cube, on the X axis, I just have to press G. You select your cube, your cube first, you press G, and then X to indicate that the axis I want to move on is the X axis. So now, if I move my mouse around, my cube will only move on the X axis. And now, it's much easier to place my cube next to the sphere. And just to be clear, you don't have to be on the X axis, right? Let's say it was here and my cube was here. I can also here press G and X and I will move along the X axis, right? On the parallel line to this line. You don't have to be exact. What I mean is you don't have to be exactly on this line. It was confusing for me at the start, so I just want to I just want it to be to be clear. Okay, so let's do it again. You select your cube, a G one time, X one time. You don't have to hold it, and you move your cube wherever you want. Okay, this is for the X axis. It's a more precise way to move objects. And it's easier this way to make my cube next to the sphere. And of course, you can use G plus Y to move it on the Y axis and G and Z to move it on the Z axis. So one last time quickly, G and X, G and Y and G and Z. Now, let me show you the most common way I use to move objects in Blender. I will place my cube here and I will leave my sphere around here. To move the cube next to it, I would have to do G and Y, 
just to go on the same level, maybe around here. Actually, let me go in top view. So just to be sure that I'm aligned, okay? And from there, I would have to move it again, G and X, to move it next to my cube. Right, perfect. But uh, it was two operations, right? We are wasting a bit of time. What I like to do, you select the cube, you press G, and then Shift Z. This way, I exclude the Z axis from the movements, and my cube is only moving on the X and Y axis. And as you can see, those two axes are highlighted. So now, it's very easy to go next to my cube in just one uh, operation. Alright, so I do it again. And this is, and once again, this is the, the most common way I move objects in Blender. So you select the cube, G one time, Shift Z one time, you don't have to hold it, and you move your cube wherever you want. And it won't go up or down because by doing Shift Z, you excluded the Z axis from the movements. So my cube stays at the same level. From there, keep in mind that you can easily change the viewport angle by pressing 1 for front view, 3 for side view, and 7 for top view. And once again, the top view is great to move objects around. Yay! Now you're a pro at moving objects, congratulations! Now let's see how to transform objects with our almighty cube. So file, new, general, I don't save this. And let me hide again the camera and the light. Okay, first the rotation. You select the cube and you press R for rotation. And you move your mouse around to rotate the cube. Okay? But, like we did for the movements, you can specify an axis for the rotation. So, R one time and X one time. And you can rotate your cube on the X axis or R and Y to rotate on the Y axis and R and Z to rotate it on the Z axis. So it's easy to remember R for rotation, right? Now the scale, you will select the cube, you press S for scale and you move your mouse around to scale it. And as usual, you can scale on a specific axis. So S and X, S and Y, and S and Z. As you noticed, I mainly use shortcuts to do that. And I strongly recommend that you do the same. So G to move, and R for rotation, and S for scale. If you forget about those keys, you can use those icons. If you leave the cursor on them, you will have the shortcut displayed. So to move your cube, it's here. And here's for the, for the rotation using the gizmos. And here the scaling using the gizmos. Okay, but once again, I rarely use that. I mainly use the shortcuts. And there is a more precise way of moving and transforming objects in Blender. You press N on your keyboard. Let me reduce this window. And you will display those tabs. And you have item, tool and view, which are the tabs by default. And you have the add-ons that you have installed in Blender. Let's go in the item tab. The item tab is where you have some properties of the object you have selected. For example, if I select my cube, I have its location, rotation, scale, and dimensions. It means that if I want to change its location, I just have to change those values. Right? If I want my cube to be at x3 meters, I just input 3 here. Okay? Same for Y, you can input any values here. And of course, same for Z. So it's a very precise way to move your object. 
And you can do the same with the rotation, X, Z, uh, Y, sorry, and Z. Same for scaling. You can adjust those values directly here in the item tab. And another great property that we have here is the dimensions of the cube. Because for now, we did not know what was the cube dimensions, but here you can see it's two meter by two meter by two meter. So if I want to change it here, I can. I just input a value and it will change the dimensions of my cube. So it's a very important tab to know when we are manipulating objects in Blender, the item tab. Once again, you press N to display all those tabs and you have the item tab. All right, now you know the basics of transforming and moving objects in the viewport. Before we talk about camera and lights, let's bring some colors. First, let's add different meshes. So shift A, as you already know now, and I will select a UV sphere and G and X to move it on the X axis. And let's add shift A, for example, a cone as well. And maybe another one, shift A mesh, and why not a, a torus? Okay, shift, uh, sorry, G and X to move it. All right, so we have four different objects, four different meshes. And one tip before we continue, when you have uh, an object like this one, a sphere, maybe you expect it to, to be smooth, not have those little faces everywhere. So if you want it to be smooth, you just right click on it and shade smooth. You do the same for all the objects that you want uh, to have a smooth surface, surface, right? Okay. And before we continue, just for training purpose, let's align those objects on a virtual floor. If I press one with my keyboard, let's say the X axis should be the floor. So once again, just to train yourself uh, uh, to move uh, objects, you will move all those objects on the floor. So G, G and X and G and X. And you do the same for all the different objects. So now it seems that they are on the grid. Actually, we are looking at the viewport in the solid mode. I will not go too much in details, but there are four modes. You just click on those icons to change the preview mode, or you press Z on your keyboard and you can select the preview mode here. <laughs> Maybe there is too many shortcuts to remember, so just use those icons if you want to change the preview mode. So first we have the wireframe mode where you see everything in wireframe. As you can imagine, it consumes less resources, but it's wireframes. And then you have the solid mode, the one we've been using so far. This is the one I use when I start a project just to place everything around. It's not calculating any lightning and for the material, it's just using the base color. And then you have the material preview mode. By default, the lighting is not calculated, but you can see the materials applied on your objects. And finally, we have the render preview mode, where the image looks closer to the final render because the lights are calculated, the shadows, the materials and textures. Along this course, according to our needs, we will see what preview mode to use, but most of the time, you can't be wrong being in material preview mode. Or if your viewport is too slow, you can switch to solid mode. So for now, let's stick in material preview mode. Our meshes are all white because they don't have any material yet. And when I talk about material, think of it as the skin of an object, where you will have the color and the texture. Let me show you an example with this tree. We, we have a dominant color, which is kind of gray brown. But it's not only about the color, it's also the texture. This is not uniform. We don't have a single color for all the objects. There are, there are patterns and there are imperfections and stuff like that. This is the texture. So when you think of material, don't forget to think about the base color, but also all those little imperfections that makes the, the material looks good. 
So to add the material to an object, let's go in the shading workspace. This is the workspace I told you I'm using all the time with layout. So you click here on shading. Once again, this is something we could do in layout, but it's more convenient to do it there because we have all the windows already organized for us. Let's select the cone, for example, to start with it. And here, in this window, we are supposed to see the material applied to this object. There is nothing currently, so let's create one by pressing new. There are two nodes which are created, the material output and the principal BSDF. And as you can see, there is a link between those two. BSDF go to surface. We are not going to talk now about all those parameters, but the idea is all those settings define how the surface of this object will look. For example, there is a setting here named base color. So if I change this one for something like gray or maybe blue, I can change the color of the surface of this object. And maybe I will go so something like red. Let me zoom on this object. Okay. There is also, for example, the roughness. And if I lower the roughness, as you can see, my object becomes shiny. And if I raise my roughness, there's no reflection on it. Okay, so this is something you can use to simulate the, the wetness of an object or to give you a more plastic look. There is also the setting, metallic, and if I raise it along with the roughness, I have a very metallic feel to my object. You can play with all those settings to see the impact if you like, but once again, along the course, we will get back here to manipulate the ones we use more often, like the color, roughness, emission, emission strength, and normal. For this first example, let's create something which looks like metal. So the base color for the metal, I will go for white, FFF, maybe a little bit more gray, something like that. I will raise the metallic feel, the metallic, and the roughness, yes. So now we have the feeling that our object is made of metal. Yay, we have created our first material. Here, you can name this material. So I will call that metal. Perfect. Now that we have this material created, we can switch to another object, maybe this one. And the first thing we can do is to apply the same material to this uh, sphere. And to do that, here you have a little drop down list. You click on it, and here we have our metal material. So I just click on it. And ta we also have this metal material applied to this sphere. And now let's do the same exercise with the torus, but this time we want to have the same material, but with a slight change. So we do the same. We click on the torus. Let me press numpad period to focus on it. And maybe we'll up to zoom. And I'm sure you remember those shortcuts. Let's select the metal one. Okay. But, and let's say we want uh, this one to be darker, right? So if I change the color here, the issue is everything is changing because I am changing the metal material. So all the different objects will be impacted by my update. But I don't want that. I, would, I just want to update this one. So to do that, there is this little icon here, new material. So I will click on that. And now, as you can see, the name is not metal anymore. It's metal 001. It did a, a, a copy of the metal material. And I can change it. And I will name in, for example, metal dark. And now, if I change the base color to something darker, 
only this item is impacted because this item used the material metal dark and the other ones if i click on this one use the material metal this is how you create you create a duplicate of a material just using this new material icon and now if i click on the cube because the cube were there, was uh, there by default it already has a uh, material and it's very easy to affect a new material to this one. I, I'm sure you understand how to do. Let's say I want this one to be also metal dark. All I have to do is here. I come on the drop down list and I select metal dark. And that's it. My cube is metal dark as well. Great. Now you know the basics of creating and applying materials. And before we continue, let's save our project. So you go in file and save or the shortcut is control and S. So I will do that control and S and let's say I will name training my file training one dot blend. Just in case I have a crash in blender, <laughs> we never save. This is something you should do. You should always do control and S to save your project just in case uh, you have an issue with your computer. You don't want to, to restart everything. Okay, what is a camera in Blender? Normally, you should already have one in your scene. And if it's hidden, you just click on this little eye to make it visible. Okay, so what is a camera? Here, we have our viewport view, okay? But let's create a final image. Let's render the scene. You go in a render. And you click on render image and as you can see this is not the view we actually have in the viewport why because when we create a render when we will create when we will create a final image blender will create this final image using the camera view all the renders, all the final images we will generate from this project are coming from a camera view. It means that the camera angle and position and settings are essential for our project. And by the way, I'm not sure I already told you that this is our camera, right? So to go in camera view, once again, in order to see what we will render, you press zero on your numpad. And now you recognize the render we had because it's run because once again it's rendering through the eye of the camera through the lens of the camera. Okay, I press zero again to go out of this camera view. And let's say, let's say we want our frame to be something like that. All right, something like that. Yes. Let's go in camera view in order to place our camera in order to have this view. Okay. So I press zero and let's move the camera with our shortcut. So middle mouse button. And when I do that, as you can see, I go out of the camera view. I'm not in the camera view anymore. Every time I'm moving my mouse, every time I try to move the somewhere to move the camera, I'm going out of the camera view. And to fix that, we need to activate an option. You press N on your keyboard, you go in view, and here you tick camera to view. You press N again to hide this panel. You press zero on your numpad to go back in camera view. And now if I press middle mouse button and I move my mouse, I stay in the camera view. And this is exactly what we want to frame our shot and the shortcuts to move the camera view are exactly the same as the one we use to move in the viewport so middle mouse button here and then shift and middle mouse button to move the entire camera and middle mouse button again just to frame to frame it like this and let's zoom a little bit in that so you could use mouse wheel up or mouse wheel down. But if you remember, I can also use control, middle mouse button, 
and up or down to zoom in or out. So like this, I think I am happy with what I got. I'm happy with the framing of my camera and I will press zero to go out of the camera view. So now you know how to move your, your camera around and you know um, how to frame your shot because this is again these those are exactly the, the same shortcuts uh, that we use to move in the viewport but let me show you another technique to do that you stay in the viewport okay you stay in the viewport and you place uh, your view as you were in the camera view so let's say something like that okay and the shortcut if you want your camera to be placed exactly on this view without moving the camera itself but just by seeing seeing the viewport sorry let me give you maybe like this so we have a total um, a total uh, different example maybe something like that okay I'm, i am on the other side so you know you're not confused with the camera already placed here so now let's see let, let's say now i would like to place my camera on this framing right on on this exact position that we are on the viewport in the viewport so all you have to do is to press Control, alt and zero and as you can see my camera jumped from there to here to match exactly my position in the viewport so from there you can do whatever you need to adjust a little bit or if you were happy you just leave the camera framing like that so once again let's say i want to have my view like this okay <laughs> like this i want my camera to jump exactly on this position Control, alt and zero and here is my camera on this position i go back like this because this is i prefer to have my camera around here Control, alt zero and okay i'm happy with the result so there are again two options you can move the camera yourself and camera to view you tick it and you can move the camera or control alt zero to match the view you have in the viewport and congratulations now you know how to move your camera to frame your shots from there let's switch to render mode so we can clearly see the influence of the light so if you remember the icon to go in render mode is here render mode okay let's delete with the only light we have in this scene so here i can press x to delete and we do not have any light anymore in the scene and surprise we should have something all black right why do we have this weird gray to fix that we go on this icon world properties and as i told you before uh, those icons are impacting the entire project and here in the world properties what we could do to give you a better explanation i could go in shading you don't have to do that to go in shading but i will just explain to you here i am selecting an object and give a material to an object but i can also give a material to the entire world okay and here in those in this drop down list i can just select world and as we can see there is something on the surface of this world and this is this background and we see that this background has a strength of one right so if i go here in render mode i have this color gray if i change the strength of this to zero now i have a pure black and this is what we expect in the real world a pure black when we do not have any light okay let's go out of the camera view you press zero on your numpad so now let's add a light back to our scene but before that let's add a floor so shift a mesh and you select plane so we have this plane and let's scale it so you remember how to scale you press s on your keyboard just one time you don't need to hold it and you move your mouse 
until the floor is big enough for all our objects, something like that. Now we will add a light and this is always the same. Shift A and we go on light and we select a point light for now. And if you don't know where is your light, don't forget that if you have your object selected, you can still, you can always press numpad period to find your light. So, and it's just there, there's <laughs> something in the, somewhere in the dark. So we're going to raise it. We know that the light is selected because we have selected here in the layers section. So G and Z to raise it. And here is our light. Perfect. And we have all the shadows calculated because we are in render preview mode. So let's move this light a bit and you can move a light like any object. So G and X, something like that. Perfect. And if you remember, we have those different properties. We have those properties, the, the one for the entire object. We have the the properties for the collection and here are the properties for the selected object okay so if i click on point on my light i have the properties of my light and there is this one the object data properties where i can change the color of the light if i want to okay and i can also change actually let me go back in black, white sorry I, and I can also update the power. So let's go for maybe 1000. Perfect. And now if I go back in camera view, here I have my render. Okay, it's not, it's not really pretty, but it was just for the example. So maybe I will just lower my light here just to, to see the, the first uh, objects. But you understand now how you can bring a light to your scene. <laughs> and don't worry, we will create beautiful scenes later. But at least now you understand how it works. Okay? With those different display mode and with the light in your scene. Before we create our first render, our first beautiful render, I would say, <laughs> let me explain how animations work in Blender. I will create a new file, so file uh, new and general, and I don't need to save that because it's not pretty. <laughs> and let me hide the camera and the light. And let's say I want to move my cube from here to here, for example. All right. To do that, we will use keyframes. And I already told you about uh, this zone. This is the timeline where I can see all the frames of my project. So at the moment, 250 frames. I will change that because I only need 100 frames. For example, it's totally up to you. Here, if I press N, let me reduce that. If you remember in item, we have some parameters concerning my cube, its location, rotation, scale, and dimensions. And what we could do is to add a keyframe to ask Blender to remember all those parameters for my cube in frame one. Okay. And before we add this keyframe, let's say to Blender, hey, I want you to remember everything all those parameters. So you go in keying for the keyframes, active keying set, and we say, I want you to remember everything. When I add a keyframe, I want you to remember the location, the rotation, and the scale. All right? So you click on the cube, and we'll tell Blender to remember all those parameters in frame number one. So to do so, you place your cur mouse cursor on the viewport, and you select the cube, of course, and you press I on your keyboard. And as you can see, everything becomes yellow and we have a yellow dot in on frame number one. Because now Blender remembers that the cube has these parameters, those parameters in, on frame number one. So if I move my cube now, 
okay and i come back he will keep in my in memory those parameters okay that will be forever and i will show you how to update that later so if i go in frame number 100 and i move my cube wherever i want so g and x to move it on the x-axis somewhere around here and now i ask blender to remember this position rotation and scale location rotation and scale and how to do that we insert a new keyframe so the cursor on the viewport i press i again and as you can see i have another keyframe created so if i go back in frame one and now i press spacebar to play those different frames our cube is moving yay we have our first animation and of course i can add keyframes wherever i want so let's say in frame maybe 50 i would like my cube to be a little bit higher something like that and here where, where when i have my, the position i want i just press i again and it will add another keyframe so now if i play the animation my cube is going up and down now let's say i want to change the position in one of the keyframe so maybe i click on my cube and maybe i want to change this keyframe i don't want my cube to start here but i want my cube to start here okay i move that if i play the animation again as you can see it's not it's not updating the position so if I want to update the position, I move my cube, okay, here. I have to press I again to update this keyframe. So now my keyframe is updated, and now I have an updated animation. Same here. If I want my cube finally to go, um, I don't know, here, I have to press I. And now if I play the animation, the position is updated and this is the basic of animation in blender okay now as promised let's create our first render so i will create a new file file and new and general don't save for this first render we don't need the cube so you click on the cube and you can press delete on your keyboard or x for this first render, we are going to use the C63 AMG. You should have downloaded it already. And to bring the car in our scene, you go in File, Append, and you search for the car. You click on it, the blend file. So this is the, the name uh, of the file. You click Append. You double click on object because we want to append all the objects. You press A on your keyboard to select everything and append again. Okay, so we have our car here. And for this first render, we don't need all this rig that we will deal, we will deal with that later. So you select all the items starting with WGT, like I do, by drag dragging a box run all those items and you press h on your keyboard to hide them and same for the car rig here you can just press this little eye icon to hide it so we only have the car first let's deal with the framing so to do so we go in the camera view and if you remember this is zero on your numpad so now i'm in the camera view but i don't want my camera to move i want to frame it so i have to lock the view to the camera and for that if you remember i press n i go in view and camera to view and i press n again to hide this panel and from there middle mouse button and let's say i want to have something like that maybe a little bit more like that yeah and let's zoom in so control and middle mouse button and 
So control and middle mouse button and up just to zoom in in my car. Maybe I zoom a little bit more, control and middle mouse button and up. Okay, I like uh, this uh, camera framing. And now I press zero to go out of the camera view and we will add a ground. So shift A, mesh and plane. And my ground is here and I'm gonna scale it. So you press S on your keyboard and you just scale it like that. Another way to scale my ground quickly would be to select the plane. You press S and you select, I don't know, five or six on your keyboard. And that would scale it six times. Okay, this is just like a, a shortcut instead of scaling it manually. And before we continue, let's give this uh, ground a material. So we go in shading here. I click on the ground. And if you remember to add a material, we press new. And let's play with the BSDF. I want a base color, maybe something gray. Metallic, yes. And a lot of reflection, something like that. Okay, I like it for now. So let's go back in layout. Let's press zero to go in camera view. And let's see the final result before we create a render. So I will create on this icon, display render preview. Okay, we have different issues to fix. First, my car is not touching the ground and the light is pretty boring. So let's fix that. Let's go back in a solid mode, for example. And I go back from the camera view, press zero. And let's go on the side view. So if you remember, we press three and let's zoom in, wheel up, wheel up, wheel up. We select the plane. Sorry, three, and we select the plane and G and Z, and we can move the plane up until it touches the wheels. Okay, now it should be good. If I go back in camera preview and I go back in render preview mode, okay, now my plane is touching the wheels. Now I have another issue. It's the fact that my car is not in focus. So when we are here in the camera view, like any camera in the real life, we have a focus. If I click on my camera and I go in the camera properties, object data properties here, let's activate first the depot field like I did. So you, you tick this box, depot field. This is exactly what it is, the depot field. And if you don't know that with the, the camera, this is the um, this is what we use to to have a blurry background, okay, and to only focus the the object and to have everything else in a, a blurry mood. So what I could do is to select a focus point on my car. So you click on this uh, little uh, icon. <laughs> the color picker in Photoshop, like the color picker in Photoshop. You click on it, and you can select an object that you want to focus and we are going to focus for example front three here and now we have the front of the car in focus but this is not a good or a really accurate way to to focus let me show you a better way to uh, add a focus to your scene so you know exactly where you're focusing and it's easy and it's easy to change the focus okay so to add the focus point ourselves, you press Shift A and you select Empty and Plane Axis. So what it is, it's actually nothing at all. Empty is an empty. This is, this is nothing. This is it will not give any visual um, representation, right? It's an empty. It's nothing at all. But it can have different purpose. In our case. It will be used for the focus. 
So with your empty selected, you press 7 on your numpad just to go in top view. And we are going to move this empty. So G, like you used to do now, and Shift Z to exclude the Z axis and to move only on the Y and X axis. And I will move this empty where I want my focus to be. So just here on the Mercedes logo. So here, and maybe I will raise it. Okay, and you press numpad period to focus on this focus. And this is kinda perfect. Let me check. Maybe I want to G and Y just to stick it to the logo. And now that's perfect. Okay, so if I go back in camera view and I click on my camera, and here on my object data properties, the icon camera with the depot field activated and in focus object, now I will select this empty. So empty. And now I know that my camera will focus this empty. So it means it will focus the front of my car. Let's change the f-stop to one to have a more blurry background. And now let's check the result when we go in material preview in render preview mode. Sorry, this is way better. Okay, this is way better. But still, we have the same issue that we had before concerning this gray background. We don't want that at all. We want, like in the real life, a black background when there is no light. So I know you remember how to do that. We go here in world properties. We could go also in shading, but this time we'll go in world properties. And for the strength, we will put zero to only have the light coming from the light that is in your scene. Okay, it's starting to look good, but not quite yet. Now the issue we have is the light positioning. Let's go back in solid mode. And I go out of my camera by pressing zero. If I press seven to go in top view, here is the light, okay? And here is my camera. So we have this angle for my camera. And in, cinema in cinematography, we like to put the lights where our camera is not. I, what I mean is, if I would like to put a light in my scene, I will not put a light here. Okay, this is not good because the light is on the same side as my camera and this is not something we want. If I would like to put a light, I would put a light something somewhere here on the opposite side and somewhere, I don't know, because if I have a light here, it will light only this part, right? And this part will be totally uh, black and we don't want that. We want some contrast. So maybe let's add a light also around here, all right? Let me erase everything and let's just do this. So this light that we have there, we're going to move it somewhere uh, here, as I told you, on the opposite side. And let's add another light, Shift A and Light Point Light 7, just so it's easier to move it with this uh, new light selected G shift Z to move it and let's put it somewhere around uh, here <laughs> it's a little bit on the ground so let's raise it somewhere here all right and this one is maybe too high we go for something like that all right so this is just a cinematography principle. You move, you have, you should have your lights in the opposite side of your camera, not here, not on this side, to have some contrast. And let's see the, the results. And first, let me actually check the power of the light. So here we have 10 watt, which is way too, too, too low. Or maybe we can check like that and then we will update the light accordingly. So. We go back in camera view. I press zero on the numpad and I go back in render preview mode. 
And as you can see, it's looking so much better. No, you can already tell that the lighting is, is doing all the job here, right? We have this contrast. We have we are on the opposite side of the light, so this this side is darker and this side has lights. So it's like a, a beast, you know, like a, an animal. This is the look we were going for 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 this uh, for this shot. But of course, according to the look that you want, you we might change all the lightings. But for this simple shot, I think it's looking pretty good and pretty clean. Okay. The only issue is uh, this light is a little bit too low. It's only 10 watts. So let's raise it to maybe 100. Okay. Yes. Much better. And for the other light, which is on this side, it's already at 1000 uh, watt. If it's not the case for you, just update it to 1000. And now, now I think we have a great looking render with only two lights. You no, know, lot of contrast, lot of details, but at the same time, some mystery around those dark edges. So let's create, so let's do the final result. At the moment, we, you don't need to touch anything in the render setting. Just one thing, you go in render properties and be sure that the render engine is cycles. Okay. Because for all our projects, we will use cycles. And for the max samples, maybe if it's too high for your computer, you can just go for uh, 2048. You will still have a beautiful render. And for the other settings, we'll check that later, right? And one more thing, before you uh, go for the render, before you launch the render, be sure to go back in solid mode to spare your resources because you don't want to have one render going on, on the viewport and one render uh, going on the background. So you go back in solid mode when you do your renders always. Okay. So let's see the result, the final result, render and render image, or you can press F12. Okay. I will just do that. Okay, it's finished. It took uh, nine seconds with my computer. I have uh, 4090 with uh, i7. And as you can see, we have a beautiful result. I'm very happy with the result with only two lights. And here we go. You have your first render in Blender. Congratulations. <laughs> so that's it for chapter one. Once again, congratulations, you have your first beautiful render. And now we will start our first real project with multiple cameras and, and camera animations. And that will be great and very good looking. I'm sure you will love it. So let's go for chapter two, our first project.